Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech News, you got it, product review. This past summer, I reviewed the Power Queen 190 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop-in lead acid replacement battery, say that 10 times fast, it ended up being quite an impressive bang for the buck offering. Since then, I've had requests to review their larger 300 amp hour offering, and well, here it is. But is it any good? Let's find out. Now this battery is 12 volts, 300 amps, or 3,840 watt hours using automotive grade, grade A, prismatic cells rated at over 4,000 cycles to 80%. As for size and weight, it's approximately 20 inches long by 11 inches wide by nine inches tall and weighs in at 64 pounds. Now the BMS inside is rated at 200 amps or 2,560 watts, and this is for both charging and discharging. Note that most 300 amp hour batteries out there only have a 150 amp or even a 100 amp BMS, so Power Queen is stepping up their game on this model. Now what about series and parallel ability? Not all batteries can be put in series or parallel. Now all of Power Queen's batteries can be put in what's called a 4S, 4P configuration, which means you can put four of these in series for 48 volt operation times four of those in parallel for a total of 16 batteries running 61 kilowatt hours or about twice what the average American home uses in an average day. And that's with a total of 800 amp output at 48 volts or 38 kilowatts. That's 38,000 watts of output. In other words, Run whatever your little heart desires. Hey. <laughs> now as for the case, it's all ABS plastic all the way around. It is completely sealed and is rated IP65 water resistant. So it is fully resistant to normal outdoor weather conditions, but note it cannot be submerged. Now what about protections? The battery management system does protect the battery from overcharging, over discharging, overcurrent and short circuits. There's also a built-in overheating protection, which we're gonna test out, but it does not offer low temperature charging protection. So what's included in the box? Power Queen does include a nice color user manual, which has all kinds of information on how to properly hook up multiple batteries and stuff like that, very good. They also include four M8 bolts with these cool little plastic covers. So you can put them on just like you see I have on the battery now. You can put them on here so if you accidentally drop a tool or something metallic or conductive across the terminals, it won't cause sparks or a fire. And just like all the other Power Queen batteries, they do include a pair of nylon grab handles on each side for ease of carrying. Power Queen offers a competitive five-year manufacturer warranty across their entire product line. And of course, we took the Power Queen 300 amp hour battery into my secret laboratory here. We performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, since it's only a battery, a single fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the battery capacity test, the Power Queen scored 310 amp hours out of 300 for 103%. That means you get three extra percent for your money. Battery discharge test, we're gonna go ahead and test and see how much power can we actually pull out of this 300 amp hour battery. Now take note, it does have a 200 amp BMS, which is good for 2,560 watts. So let's see how much more we can pull out of it beyond that. Now I do have my Victron shunt set up with a Sun Gold Power inverter, a heater on the floor, a power station, and of course, dun, dun, dun! the solar degenerator. Now we're at 490 amps, it's gotta shut down. And it shut down. 
Okay, so we know our upper limit is 490 amps, but what about the sustained limit? I was able to run five minutes at 440. So something in between has to shut it down. There we go, finally shut down. Minute and a half at 450 amps. That's a thermal shutdown, folks. You notice that the Victron turned off. All right, so it took 11 and a half minutes for the battery to reset itself and start charging again. So that means if you overheat this battery, you can expect it to take somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes at normal room temperature for the battery to self-recover and turn the BMS back on. This next test is the sustained discharge test. So we're gonna try to pull as many amps as we can from the battery for five minutes. So if it shuts down before five minutes, we'll lower the amps until it gets to the point where it'll run five minutes before it shuts down. All right, let's go ahead and try it. 440 amps. I don't think it's gonna last very long, but let's give it a try. Everything's beeping. It does not like this voltage at all. I can't believe this is still going. I thought it'd shut down after two minutes at most. Unbelievably, we're coming up on five minutes at 440 amps and it's still going. Now let this stuff cool down for a while, geez. Since the Power Queen has a 200 amp BMS, that means it can also charge at 200 amps or 2,560 watts. Now I don't have anything. I could put all my chargers in this room combined. Probably still wouldn't be 200 amps. But I do have this one, Sun Gold Power, it does 80 amps. And then I have this one that does 20 amps and then this one that does 10 amps. So I have all three combined. You can see right there, 112 amps. So what do I think about the Power Queen 300 amp hour battery? Well, I do like the fact that the battery is underrated as we scored 310 amp hours on our capacity test and that was discharging around 0.2 C. I also do like the fact that this is IP65 weatherproof and has a very relatively compact size for holding over 300 amp hours. In fact, it's only about an inch longer on each dimension than the 190 amp hour version I reviewed six months ago. If your space is limited, the 300 amp hour might actually be the way to go. Now what about the downsides? Well, it does have thermal protection, meaning high temperature protection, just like all their other batteries, but this does not have low temp protection built in. However, you can still discharge a lithium iron phosphate battery down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit now that's the internal temperature of the cells, not the ambient air temperature. What counts is the temperature inside this box. So if you're actually using the battery, those cells are gonna stay warm. In fact, they're very likely to stay above freezing. And it's advised to keep these batteries in an insulated area if they're gonna be exposed to below freezing conditions. So as long as you're using them, they should remain warm enough to recharge safely. Now what's the use case? These kinds of batteries are called drop-in replacement batteries because they're designed to replace lead-acid batteries in most applications. Now, these are not starter batteries. They're not designed to start vehicles, although a 200 amp BMS would probably start most gas engines without any problem. However, you would risk damaging the BMS over a long period of time. These are mostly designed as house batteries for recreational vehicles, trailers, campers, and they're very good for off-grid solar builds. And before you ask, yes, it can be used for trolling motors and probably most golf cart applications, assuming you're pulling under the 200 amp limit. You can also use one of these batteries to supplement runtime for most solar generators that accept 12 volts by just hooking this battery into the 12 volt of your particular SoGen. And if you put four of these batteries in series for 48 volts, that is usually enough to simulate 48 volts of solar panels and charge through the solar generator's solar input. Now this is gonna be most effective on large solar generators from brands like Blue Eddy and EcoFlow. So what about inverter size? Since this has a 200 amp BMS, it can output 2,560 watts. So I would recommend a 3,000 watt inverter for this 
but if you parallel two of these together for 5,000 watts of output, you could put up to a 5,000 watt inverter on it, which is pretty insane. Now I do have some recommended inverter models on my product page at hubotech.tv slash Amazon. In this video, I actually use the Sun Gold Power 3000 watt inverter charger for my testing. Now, what about charging options? There's this whole myth out there that you need special chargers for lithium batteries. That's not the case for ones that have their own BMS. Now, the BMS stands for Battery Management System. It's a computerized circuit board that's inside. It controls everything about the battery. What's in here is not just raw cells. It's got electronics. It's actually pretty smart. It knows how to keep itself from being damaged. So any charger that outputs 14.4 to 14.6 volts DC will charge this battery. You don't need a special lithium charger or a special lithium solar controller. Just be aware if you kill this battery all the way down to 0% charge, the BMS, the little computerized board inside, will shut off and then you have to jumpstart it back to life with another 12 volt source and doesn't really matter what that 12 volt source is. The main reason to have a lithium capable charger is it'll do that jumpstart for you automatically. Most of the time your inverter is gonna beep and shut down long before the battery itself shuts off. However, if you are drawing DC direct from the battery, you can, in fact, pretty easily get it down to zero and get it to shut off. Product price. Now the retail price for this is 989, which isn't bad on its own, However, I shrewdly negotiated a better offer for Hobotech viewers. The final price for a limited time using my discount code is only $9.29. This is an even better deal than their own Black Friday sale price a few weeks ago, and it works out to a fantastic 24 cents per watt hour. And note, the more you buy, the more you save. You can save up to an additional $139 when you buy two of these batteries, or if you buy four, you can save an additional $318, and that's on top of my discount. Remember that these batteries easily have a 10-year lifespan and come with a five-year warranty, and that's at this discounted price. If you were to fully cycle this battery from zero to 100% every single day for 10 years, it would only cost you 25 cents a day. And then you'd still have 80% of the battery life left over after that 10 years of cycling. Now, say you were to do the same thing with three 100 amp hour lead acid batteries from Walmart that cost 99 bucks each, and then replace those once a year or every 365 cycles, which is pretty much their cycle life. Most lead acid battery cycle life is between 300 and 400 cycles. It would cost you over $3,000 over 10 years so you can actually buy one of these for $9.29 and get it to last for 10 years and cycle it every day, no problems, no worries. Or you can buy 30 100 amp hour lead acid batteries over the next 10 years and blow three grand for the same results. Now it's very clear that lithium is far cheaper and practically maintenance free in the long run compared to lead acid. Yep it seems lead acid is officially dead. So what if you need a heated version of this battery? Well, they do not offer a heated 300 amp hour, but Power Queen does offer a heated 100 and 200 amp hour versions of this battery. So if you're interested in something like that or anything else on their website, I'm gonna have a separate discount code down in the description that'll get you a few bucks extra off of their other offerings. So if you're interested in the 300 amp hour Power Queen, the link is gonna be below in the description of this video. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually, and a QR code over here that you could scan with a mobile device. It'll take you on over to the Power Queen store where you can check out the 300 amp hour lithium battery. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now, till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Ho, 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 bo! Merry Christmas all, happy holidays and happy new year. I wanna thank everyone for tuning in and watching Hobotech over this past year. It's been pretty challenging. I put out more videos this year than I ever have in the five years on YouTube. So I've worn myself out quite a bit. And for those of you that are new to the channel this past year, I take an annual vacation in January. I head out to Quartzsite, Arizona, 
where I hang out with all my old peeps that I used to camp and travel with. Every year we get together in Quartzsite, Arizona and camp out in the desert for about a month and just have good old times, sit around the campfire, have some clinkies, uh, just have some good times with friends and enjoy each other's company. And then when I come back in February, I'm going to finish the solar on my house finally. And I'm gonna start doing reviews and stuff again in March. Now, I'm gonna be changing gears a little bit for next year. I'm not gonna explain that right now. So as letting you guys know, there's one more video left for 2022. Then I'll do two videos in January that I'm taking off for a month. And when I come back, I will get back to business as usual. I'll start doing reviews of different products in 2023, not just solar generators. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. RV Golf Guy. Von Rob. Brian Lieber's Johnson. Jason Soroka. Dr. Steve Eisenman.